This looks good today, y'all. All the fried shit. So we got egg roll, fried rice, sweet and sour. This is like the only thing that's good from there. My parents' dog died. I'm gonna say my parents' dog because she was a lot like a little sister to me. Like I've never had a little sister, an older sister or a younger sister, but she was like a little sister to me and she was just so sweet. It doesn't make it any easier knowing that she was old and like really sick. Okay, look at it. <laughs> okay. All right. But yeah, it happened yesterday while I was at work. Um, I was able to leave work to see her one last time. R.I.P. Bella. She was definitely a real one. I could have got McDonald's for the same amount of this, and this is so much better. Uh, I'll miss Bella. She was such a happy and grateful dog because she came from such a bad home. I got a spoon now. They gave me a fork, but I'm going to do a spoon. They got her when she was probably like eight or nine. Well, they've had her for 10 years now. It's hard. It's like losing a family member. But you know what? I'm so glad that I made up with my parents like right before she died. What was I saying about Bella? Just a grateful, happy dog. Um, so 10 years ago this month, we put our first dog down, Chewy. And it wasn't the same exact date, but it was 10 years later. That's so crazy, y'all. 10 years just flies by. Old ass dog. Oh yeah, but making up with my parents, like literally the week of, she died. It's about to rain, y'all. It's about to rain on us. ASMR mooping. Like 10 years is truly not a long time. I guess I'll wait till it starts raining though. It's really hot. But isn't that crazy? Like I thought about that when I was, you know, not talking to them. I didn't talk to them since December. So January, February, March. Five months, almost six months. And I was like, I would feel really bad if this, you know, if Bella dies and I just didn't even get to say goodbye. I don't know. I just feel like the things that have been happening that I've been telling y'all about might've been the push to go see them.
I'm upset about Bella. I am. But when we lost Chewy, like, Chewy was like my son that my parents like took over and were like, he's ours now. That was my baby. But they claimed him as theirs. That was so rough, y'all. Oh my god, it's about to rain. Okay. No, no. But you know what? For those of you that have animals... Oh, it just got dark. You really have to be careful with these tixies this year. My aunt... My aunt. My boss's dog just passed away from Lyme disease. She never took this dog out. It only hung on her backyard and it got a tick that gave it Lyme disease and it died. So my boss's dog passed away like four days before Bella on her birthday. You know what I mean? So it could really be so much worse. But it's crazy because Bella must have known because I wasn't around. I came to visit her on. Okay, so today's Friday. She passed away on Thursday. She was doing better on Tuesday. She got worse on Wednesday. And then she got really bad on Thursday when they put her down. So I saw her on Sunday and on Monday. They had just come back from visiting my grandma. And Bella was just hyperventilating. They took her to the vet. The vet said she was in really good health. But they didn't do any blood work. So my parents thought that after I had first seen her, she had gotten better the next day. They thought maybe she was just like road sick, you know? Road trip sick. Then she wasn't doing good. They take her back to the vet on Wednesday. They do the blood work. Vet says she has stage four kidney failure. I thought she was gonna be able to make it to the weekend, so we were planning to see her on Saturday. And something just told me to text my parents yesterday, close to noon. And they're like, she's not doing well. We're gonna go put her down. Like she's dying. She's literally dying on us. Oh, shit. Is a branch gonna fall on me, y'all? That would seriously suck if I died filming a move bang. Like, what the hell? That would be the way I fucking die. Lord. I'm sacrificing my life for y'all right now. There's like a huge branch right in front of me too. I'm scared. Okay. So anyway. It's about the thunderstorm. When I saw her yesterday she was doing the same thing where she was hyperventilating so she was in a lot of pain and then i don't know if my presence like made her calm but then she looked like she was like doing better you know she was resting a little bit better she was calmer mm -mm. mother nature do not do this to me It was sad, but I'm glad I got to leave for like an hour, hour and a half. To 
to say my goodbyes. I really should have just left for the rest of the day, but, but just the fact that my bosses support me enough in emergency situations to be able to leave means a lot. My old job would have never done that shit. They would have been like, okay, it's not even your dog. Crazy. R.I.P. Bella. There was no replacing Chewy. You can't even compare the two. But she was just her own dog who was just genuinely happy to be around my parents and despite all the bullshit it really meant a lot to them that I not only made the time to see her earlier in the week but I left my job to like go see her before see I could have just got chicken nuggets from McDonald's but this just doesn't, it doesn't compare. All right, for me personally, I don't think that all the weird paranormal things that were happening to me weren't in correlation to what was going on at home, you know? Nothing's happened since, but I have been waking up, like, I've been waking up at 2 a.m. and I just can't fall back to sleep till, like, after 4. But I just try to pray to Jesus. And, you know, they say the D word really comes after you when you're trying to do better for yourself and you know we have been eating like shit but I, like, I don't think I'll ever stop fully eating like shit but I have cut back I've been working out just trying to focus on my mental you know we're growing we're almost at our K y'all thank you Ooh, that was salty. Who needs soy sauce when your fucking rice is full of it? Shit. I tasted like I put a whole thing of soy sauce. I say maybe I should have done McDonald's. A part of me also thinks that there could be a generational curse. Just based off the things that have happened in my family. And like a bunch of things I don't even really know about. And I'm trying to figure out ways to stop that, at least with me. It's been several weeks now, but I'm still trying to deprocess getting bit in the middle of the night. I've never felt something so physical that I thought were my cats. Like, my cats would never bite me like that. I don't think I'll ever not feel this one little part right here. Like, every time I touch it, I still feel the stinging. So, in order to cover up some of my shitty tattoos, 
I think I'm gonna put I'm gonna tattoo a rosary I'll put a picture of how I did it of where that bite mark happened I use air quotes loosely because again like if it's something in my mind subconsciously the fact that it manifested itself like that but I just don't think it's my mind playing tricks on me you know I just have to remind myself that I'm protected. I grew up with Jesus. I grew up with God. I'm not perfect. I'm finding my way back to it. I just don't want him to feel like I'm only turning to him when I need him. And that's what it feels like. But you know, like I said, the second I got rid of all the spiritual woo shit in my house, that's when the attack started happening and I immediately went back to the sage I went back to the crystals and nothing's been happening but now I'm looking back on it and I'm thinking I thought that those things were protecting me and then when I got rid of them that I'm being protected now that I have them back but what if it's the opposite what if the malevolent forces at nature are just upset that I'm turning away from, you know, open doors. Because, you know, when we sin, that's that's the open door. You know, my friends or my family who might not be super religious, even Jonathan, are so supportive. And that means a lot because if you watch, um, I recommend watching some clips from Club Shay Shay with Cal Mitchell. Cal Mitchell actually talks about how he found God because he was spiritually attacked. And that's what I was telling Jonathan. It's like, no one, he's like, well, what do you want me to do? I'm like, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing no one can do. I mean, maybe a priest or an exorcism or whatever, but even then I'm like, the only person, the only people who can help me are the higher powers, like God, Jesus, Holy Spirit. So what else am I going to turn to when I have nothing else to lose, when I'm feeling negative things, you know? Like that shit just felt like fuck you like it very much felt like hate that's why i know it wasn't my cats my cats my one cat would play bite me but never bite me like that uh, like i said i wake up in the middle of the night but I work through my fear and know that there's nothing to be scared of. It's crazy because I opened my Bible, my little like travel Bible. And unbeknownst to me, I opened it up to like one of the most popular um, like sections, like John 14 something. And it said, and I'm paraphrasing here, but it was just like, don't be scared. Like I'm in your heart. Don't be scared. <laughs> Mm -mm. I mean, why is New Age so accessible to anybody? You know? You can just go on Amazon and then buy, buy an entire stage kit, buy Ouija boards. Why is that promoted? Um... Um, I know I filmed my charcuterie board moving, but I'm even hesitant to film stuff at home just because 
there have been questionable things that have happened on camera. And I just cut them out. And it's because I just don't even want to get into debates with people, persons, about it being fake or it might be the wind or my cats or whatever. Like, I know my truth. I know what I'm experiencing. And a part of me does want to feel like it's my brother. Like, pushing me to tell me, you need to go talk to your parents, you know. The dog is about to die. Because you know what? My parents don't have anybody to talk to about that stuff. They don't talk to, any, to anybody else. My, my dad can't go talk to my grandma and be like, hey, this happened. His mom who passed. He doesn't talk to any of his family. My mom doesn't really talk to anybody. My grandma, her mom has dementia. My brothers are nowhere to be found. I've accepted my role as my mom's therapist, but I'm the therapist who just listens and doesn't give any freaking therapy advice because she's not going to take it anyway. She just needs an outlet to vent. Boundaries. I feel bad for my mom more than anything, you know? Because we're so first person that we forget, you know, what have they been through. And my mom has been through so much shit in her life. It's like, no wonder she is the way she is, you know? But she's not bad. Despite all her flaws and her mental instabilities, like, there's no question that she loves the fuck out of me. Like, a little too much, but I'll take it because her mom never showed her love growing up and she just shows me an overabundance of it, you know? And I gotta be grateful for that. We finished it. I was so hungry, y'all. I'm so glad I didn't do McDonald's. That would have not been worth the shits. Oh, no. I just spilled sauce everywhere, y'all. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.